So guys, I've been in a conversation for the last couple days uh, with this brother in Christ still that said we have, you know, a new heart, which I told him that's fine. Um, I don't care if you believe that as long as you don't use that to try to get believers to take their eyes off of Christ and look onto them on this their selves their feelings and behaviors and things like that for their assurance of their salvation but we're having a continuing conversation and I just wanted to um, read uh, the most recent comments because I realize that there's some scripture explanation in here and maybe some further understanding to be had for all of us from these scriptures. And so instead of just having it in his comment section, I wanted to share it with you guys. I'm not showing his channel name because we're still having a conversation I don't want it to look like I'm trying to humiliate him because that's not it at all. We're just having a brother-sister conversation. So, <clears throat> he put, um, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's true. This is the main key aspect to understand, no matter how a person feels. I just try to go into deeper of why a person may feel certain things. Sometimes people need more explanation and help because they still feel condemned, even though God's word says we're not condemned. Amen. And I'll shout it to the rooftops about loving Christ in sincerity because this is true. Yes, it is. Praise God. I love him even though my actions don't show it most of the time. True. He told Peter, I, you know, same with me. He told Peter, do you love me? feed my sheep. And Peter was able to truly love Jesus because he was a born again, new creation. Okay. And I wondered if he was implying something about, uh, the new heart. I wasn't sure. So I went on here to explain the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy spirit. Love is a fruit of his spirit. That's his agape love in the Greek. We are capable of sincere love for God because he first loved us. Remember, First John said this is love. Not that we love God, but he first loved us. You know, and he sent his son to save us. And we're walking by faith. So we're, we're capable of sincere love for God because he first loved us. And we're walking by faith according to his spirit. Keeping in mind the gospel, right? That's how we abide. That's how we bear fruit. That's how we partake of the vine by abiding in him. A true born again believer can certainly harden their heart against God in anger or fear or for whatever reason. Do you see why I'm saying we have two natures and it's our spirit that is regenerated, but the condition of our hearts depends on our continuing walk of faith and doesn't change our position in him, but can affect our enjoyment of him as well as our witness. When Jesus asked Peter, did he agape him? Peter said twice, I phileo you. He wasn't yet capable of true agape love because it's a fruit of the spirit. Philo, philo, I don't know how to say that, that word in the Greek for love is a human affection like an unsaved person has for a friend or a family member. So he says, I understand what you're saying. Do you have any New Testament verses about born again Christians hardening their hearts toward God? Because I can see countless ones talking about unsaved people in the Old Testament and unsaved people in the New Okay, and this this is the part that's pretty important here. So these are the verses I shared, Hebrews 
beginning Hebrews 3.12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Being a partaker of Christ means eating and drinking of him, enjoying him. You know, we're going to him for our nourishment, for our source. He is our life. Which happens when we hold fast to our confidence in him. The gospel, our assurance of salvation. We can only do that by faith in the blood, knowing that his precious shed blood has made us at peace with God in spite of what we see in ourselves. That's what faith is. Washing one another's feet is the exhorting one another that Paul told them to do in Hebrews, right? Building each other up in the faith, reminding them who they are in Christ so they don't allow their hearts to harden against God. There is a hard heart in the unbeliever towards God. Sorry, guys, I just woke up recently. Who has heard and rejected the gospel, but there's also a heart that can become hardened in the believer if they don't hold fast to their confidence. Paul speaks about this in Galatians, about believers losing their sense of blessing and being moved away from Christ. Falling from grace where Christ becomes of no effect to them. They aren't unsaved. You can't be in grace and then fall from it, right? Unless you were in it already. So it's not like, because some people like to say these people were unsaved, right? They stopped partaking of his life in them as nourishment and began feeding their flesh with law and self-righteousness because of unbelief brought on by listening to the Judaizers. That's why he said we don't, we don't give place to these people that try to bring law back into the Christian life. Not for one hour, right? We mark and avoid. Let them be anathema, accursed. So I hope this helped you guys understand these passages and how even a believer can become hardened in their heart and not enjoy Christ like they should or could. <clears throat>